Hey guys, I'm David with Team 4Runner and we're here with Jason from Overland Cookery and we're on this awesome Firestone road trip and figured we'd go over their entire setup for you guys. Hey everyone, Jason Schaub with Overland Cookery here. First question, why 4Runners? Why 4Runners? Yes. <sighs> uh, there's a laundry list of reasons. Uh, capability, reliability, comfort, uh, payload capacity is a big one. There's not a whole lot of vehicles on the market that cover all those bases as well as being four-wheel drive off-road capable. Totally. Um, you're looking at you know, a four-door Wrangler, but the interior cargo capacity is really limited. Totally. Um, most other SUVs are gonna be um, unibodies, not body on frame. Yep. Um, so you're really kinda, if you're looking at a newer vehicle, in my opinion, it's gonna be a, a 200 series Land Cruiser or a four-runner. I'm with you. And at, the, and at the price point, I love to have a 200, but you know, you're looking at a, a used Land Cruiser with a bunch of miles and you're still going to save 15 grand, exactly. if not more, which is a lot of accessories. Totally. So, so we're going to walk around the side here and we're going to check out what they got going on. First off, they have this trailer. I'll have Jason tell us more about it, but sure. I think it's got some custom timber and axle suspension on there. Yep. So, yeah. And keep in mind, we are mid cook for a media event with over 17 people so this is sort of raw in the field exactly how we're operating totally. um yeah i purchased this utility trailer as a custom built trailer uh, about a year and a half ago and we had a catastrophic failure off sonora pass it was a traditional beam axle broke the axle uh, ended up towing yeah. it off the mountain using a, a log as mm -hmm. a sled just dragging it yeah. and didn't want that to ever happen again so went with the timberin axleless suspension on down shocks uh, super robust, independent, uh, totally. works well, especially for this application. A little bouncy. Um, we've got the yellow trailer, which we'll get to. That's on Firestone airbags, which is much smoother. Um, comparing the two, that's definitely the way to go. Totally. Yeah. Um, but our setup's basically... So what do you keep in this one? Yeah, yeah. excellent. That's just where I was going. Um, this is the, the food trailer. So coolers and dry food storage. And anything else that we have to carry. This is currently our uh, dishwasher setup. Um, we're stacking everything in here. Well, see, we've got four of us on the crew. So uh, in this application, we're putting all the dirty dishes here. We're gonna set up a assembly line yep. with uh, rinse, soap, rinse again, and then a sanitization tank. Uh, same system that you use in a restaurant. Wow, yeah. that is next level stuff on the trail. When you're cooking for this many people, you gotta keep it you know, up Sanitary. to code. Exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Totally. Let's go around to this trailer real quick. Before we get to the forerunners, we'll go over to their like, nope. cooking trailer. Yeah. This is our brand new trailer. It's the Maiden Voyage. It is essentially a four wheel drive mobile kitchen. It's got food grade stainless steel tops. We have aluminum drawers. We have cabinets. Uh, pretty much everything that we would need for preparing food for up to 30 to 40 people off road. Um, and again, it's on substantial independent trailing arms with Firestone airbags so it's height adjustable you can level it from side to side if the terrain is is uneven and we did when you when you lower the airbags down to the bump stops the the prep surface is at counter height so you're not bending over on a, a small camp table you're actually at a proper working stance so you're not going to get back pain or anything like that oh that's next yeah let's go around to the grill setup real quick. Yeah, this is our Camp Chef six burner event series stove. It's literally the only thing on the market that can handle this type of event. And we've got a flat top griddle. Underneath the flat top is an actual grill. So if we want to do a burgers or grill night where you didn't want to use the flat top, we have that option too. And the flat tops are just so universal. You can put pots and pans right on this and cook things like that. So you don't have to set up a second stove for that. It's just, oh, it's a nice. big, cook surface and you can adjust the temperature all the way down so you can have cool zones, warm zones, etc. We're going to get to the forerunners now, the fun stuff. This is what we like. All right, we'll start with the OG. We have a 20, 2010? It's a 2013, 2013 trail. trail. The best one. It truly is. This has everything you need, nothing you don't. Uh, I bought this new, actually sold it to my father when he retired in Todos Santos, Baja, California. Uh, we got it back for this trip. Gobi Roof Rack, 33-inch uh, Firestone, their brand new destination, MTs. We've got 4x4 Lab sliders, actually on both 4Runners, which in my opinion are the best sliders. They replace the lower trim, so they're super high clearance. 
Um, they don't bolt on to the the traditional studs that most sliders bolt onto. It's actually a giant U-bolt that goes around the entire frame. Uh, they are not going anywhere. What are, you, what are you rocking for suspension on this thing? This has a Fox 2.0, or I'm sorry, 2.5 front coilover and Fox 2.0 uh, Performance Series rear shocks with a Radflow two inch lift coil, which I believe is a 20% increase in spring rate. Very nice, very nice. We're not weighing it down with winch bumpers or anything like that because it wasn't really intended for super hardcore. No. Um, but again, most people would be scared to learn what they could do in a, a slightly modified Forerunner. They're just 100%. incredibly capable. Yeah. We've gotten ourselves into some trouble. Yeah, in I some bet. Stock trucks. Yeah, probably all have. And you got the Gobi roof rack up there. That's a classic. I like the Gobi. Not too much wind noise. Uh, you know, I had a. I don't want to talk poorly about other brands, but I had a flat uh, platform rack yeah. that just, the wind noise was reverberating and it would cause the sunroof to actually move up and down. And I, I uninstalled it after a month. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, the Gobi's just, you know, you can get accessories for anything for it. Um, yeah. Steel. Yep, they'll, they'll build for war. Yeah, yeah they're good. It's a real so. Well, cool, we're gonna move on to the white Forerunner over here. This thing is one of my favorites. Yeah, well this Forerunner has, we'll start with the armor, again, 4x4 labs, all the way around. I've been working with Luke from 4x4 labs for years. They do great stuff. Um, that's actually the first mod that I did before I even lifted it, was front and rear bumpers and sliders, 4x4 labs, because I knew exactly what I wanted to do with this build. I have to say, this is the best looking front bumper on a 5th gen Forerunner, by far. The highest clearance, it is the real deal. Like, looks good. Super high clearance. Pockets for fog lights, uh, had a 30 inch Baja Designs bar integrated into the grill. I prefer it up front so you don't get reflections off the hood. Totally. Yep. Come up winch, uh, synthetic line. And what are we rocking for suspension on this? Yeah, the oh. suspension on this is currently Radflow 2.5 up front, 700 pound coils, and ADS 2.5 with external reservoirs in the rear. I have ADS for the fronts. They're getting rebuilt right now. Uh, okay, I was gonna ask. I'm like, I love me some ADS, so. Oh yeah, Tyler at ADS. I lived in Tucson for eight years and they're local. Oh man. And Adam, our fabricator, he yeah. built the, the cook trailer. Um, we've been using them for, for years. They're super helpful. Yeah. Awesome customer, customer service. service. Exactly. That's where it is. <laughs> yeah. The customer service comes into play there. Yeah, when we got the, uh, the ADS shocks for this, I think it was uh, two years ago, Adam and I put them on and just took a quick drive around his neighborhoods, speed bumps. You hit them, you weren't even there. No. It was just like perfect. It's butter. Yeah. Oh, uh, full skid plates. I went with aluminum from RCI uh, just to try and save weight because this is not the lightest vehicle. No. And are these 33s or 35s? These are 35s. 35s. He's rocking the big tires here. Oh, yeah. We've got uh, total chaos UCAs on both vehicles. I like the Uniball. Cash Get that extra shape. down travel. Yep. Everything. Yeah, all extended travel coilovers in the front. Do you carry a can of tri-flow with you? I haven't had an issue with squeaks, actually. Oh, yeah. man. Uh, where, where, are you, where do you live again? I'm in the Bay Area, Northern California. Okay, so. Yeah, yeah we're, we're Colorado guys, so, you know, we get the salt on the roads and uniballs are instantly squeaking. You know, I did just pick up a set of Dobinson's ECAs for the Gray Forerunner. And there's use rubber bushings and a sealed ball joint. Did you get the, so Dobinson's just came out with a new billet one as well. They're not billet. And they're the, they have the tubular ones. I've heard they're both great. Okay. And I like the stock, the stock ball joint in those ones is epic because it's you can go, you can go pick one up at a parts store. No yeah. problem. It's like a stock truck. So depending on what climate you're in, that's another good option, Dobbinson's. Yeah. I'll shout out to Dobbinson's too. I've worked with Mike at, uh, I think he's at Exit Off-Road Exit now. Exit Off-Road, yeah. Yeah, I've had four pairs of Dobbinson's coils on this truck because the weight keeps changing. It's my fault, not theirs. Not at all. Uh, yeah, so I currently have their, I believe it's 800 plus pound load capacity, linear and I, rate. And I heard they're coming with an 850, coming out with an 850. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'd actually be interested in that because we're running about a half inch spacer on top of these coils. Yeah. Mainly because we tow so much. We want to get that extra height in the back. We, we do the same thing with our Dobbinson's coils in the back of the Firestone truck. Same exact thing, a spacer on top, but Dobbinson's is finally coming out and they're correcting it for everybody. So that's really cool. 
So we'll keep going down the side here. We got 4x4 lab sliders on this one. The rear bumper, dual swing out. We'll get into the interior Interiors. real quick. This is where it's at. You got the S-Pod here. You got the leather cooled seats. It's a limited, guys. This is a limited on 35s. Nobody's doing this like Overland Cookery. I'm serious. Well, yeah. So I started with the trail edition, sold that, and then ended up getting another fifth gen. And I knew I wanted full-time four-wheel drive for snow and for wet weather. It's a, it makes a huge difference in my opinion. I agree. And I knew I was going to put bumpers on it, so I didn't care that the Limited had the lower trim package. And you also get air-conditioned seats and JBL sound and all that. So all the nice. It stuff. works. Yeah. It's it's luxury. It's the L it's the 200 series Land Cruiser that we want, but we're forerunner guys. It's close. Yeah, we also have a in my family we have a GX 460. I want to say it's a 2017. Oh yeah. And this definitely it's not a GX, but it approaches it much more than a, you know, a trailer and SR5. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. The only thing you're missing is that 6-speed trans and the uh, V8. I wish we had the 6-speed and the V8. Yeah. The GXs are like bank vaults oh. on wheels. They're just so quiet and smooth. Totally, but, totally. Um, so we'll show you off this rear suspension real quick. It's kind of muddy, it's it terrible is. lighting, but. I'm not running a rear sway bar right now. I had an anti-rock on. Oh. It was a custom install, not by us. That was not done correctly. Correct. So we're gonna cut off the tabs they put on and, and redo it. Yeah. Um, but I do like the anti-rock. The anti-rocks are a game changer. Yeah. Putting an anti-rock on my next truck, so. No sway bars, I've driven without it too much and it is terrible, so. Yeah. All right, let's check out the back of this thing. All right, what do All we right. got going on back here? Yeah, we've got Big Country drawers. They're a, they've been around in South Africa for a long time. They are new to the US market. They sent us these to test out and we've been super happy with them. They work great, positive latch mechanism. They all lock, uh, they've got side panels too we just have them off because we need all the storage we can get exactly uh we've got another camp chef three burner this thing puts out the heat really really nice for what we do it's got a cast iron top um, we didn't need it this morning but when you're doing rice and beans for 20 people that gets the gets the heat going fast yeah and this fridge is new this is a national luna dual zone love it i love having the freezer you got ice cream sundays last night it's true yeah Ice, ice cream on a camping trip in the middle of a trail. Probably one of the best things ever. <laughs> what else do we have on these swing out? What swing out is this again? This is the 4x4 Labs swing out. Not uh, many people have this swing out. I, I don't feel know. like. I've, we don't see it much. Yeah, I feel like. you know. And but this is, this is the real deal. We like, should really do a comparison video with all it. the different rear bumpers. Oh, totally. Like, there's enough That's of us coming. around. Yeah, and just talk about the pros and cons of all of them and see what works best for it each application. Everybody. Uh, yeah, Luke did this for me. I don't know if he offers this or not. It's basically a, a bike quick release. We've got uh -huh. cutting board material on this side uh, so and uh, a baking sheet, which people laugh at, but when you're on a hill like this and you put something that rolls, the lip helps it from falling off. Totally, so. you, nef you definitely need the baking sheet. That's, yeah. a, that's smart. That's yeah. really smart. Super smart. Holds 35. And we got the negative 38 stealth. Clearing a 35 with negative 38s on a fifth gen. Nobody's doing that. They help so much off road. The difference between a 33 and a 35 is tremendous. Um, we were wheeling the yeah, Slick Rock Trail in Northern California last year. My buddy Pete, he's got a trail edition. I think it's a 2013 too. Yeah. Um, he's on, you know, coil over lift with 33s, sliders, get it out the whole nine and we're going up the steps and my actually i blew a fuse from my compressor so i didn't have lockers yeah and i don't know if you're familiar with the slick rock trail it's it's technical and i made it up an a track just crawled up a track did its thing we yeah. love toyota thank and, you toyota but it's those big tires because they fill the holes better yeah. pete was on 33s and he was spinning tires and even though he had the rear locker on he was struggling and it's, it was one of those instances where the larger tire really did make a difference. Totally. Um, 
I've noticed that too. I have 33s on my daily slash my weekend warrior, but the 35s when you're on that technical stuff, it makes all the difference. Yeah. They roll, they roll over everything so much easier. So. Super nice. The thing with the forerunners, at least in my opinion, is that you can get away with stock gearing on 33s, but when you go up to 35s, you really should consider re-gearing both for gas mileage and for the lower gear ratio off-road. I was gonna ask, so you guys are re-geared, correct? This one's re-geared, this has 488s. Okay. And I've got front and rear lockers, so it's triple locked. Ooh. Yeah. We can so, pop the hood if you want. Yeah, let's pop the hood. Let's pop the hood. I did not realize this is a limited that's triple locked. 80 series, guys, where are you at? I've got an 80, too, <laughs> that's locked. Although I did a part-time conversion on it, so it's not triple locked anymore. But, um... Bro, are you even triple locked? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we've got um, the Red Arc. DC to DC charger that maintains proper voltage to the auxiliary battery. We've got the S-Pod, which you saw. Um, the light bar goes straight from the battery. Ditto with the winch. I've got a battery switch for the winch for safety purposes. Because you're in a collision, you're not going to have something short out. Otherwise, pretty straightforward. And you relocated your windshield washer fluid? I did. That was uh, Schrockworks, I want to say. Yeah. Yeah, out of Texas. Um, yeah, it worked well. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> Safari snorkel, Gobi rack. What do we got going on up here? What kind of tent is this? This is an auto home Columbus with the air struts. And I'll just tell a quick story. Yeah. Yeah, I started with the Tapui. Uh, they're local to me. I'm from the Bay Area. Tapui was in Santa Cruz at the time. And that was a game changer initially. Loved it. Totally. So comfortable. But after enough, enough trips, you get tired of getting up on the roof and putting the cover on and you kind of get just dirty and hot enough in the morning where you're yeah. uncomfortable. So I'm running into that issue with the Yakimas right now. Okay. Yeah. If it's on a trailer or lower down, it's not so much of an issue, but when you got to crawl up here, it's, yeah. it can be kind of a pain, especially if you're by yourself. Totally. Um, yeah. So last, I think I've had this for two years now, went with the auto home mainly because it's one latch. It is the quickest to deploy and the quickest to put away. You can also store your bedding. So I've got sleeping bags, blankets, and pillows up there, plus the ladder. And all in the tent. All in the tent. Yeah. Saves so much storage. Yeah, there's a lot of thinner profile uh, pop-up roof tents now, but you can't put the ladder in or you can't put the bedding in. Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's kind of an inconvenience. So this has everything all up there and they've also been making tents since I want to say the 50s. Auto home's been around a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I kind of trust that that knowledge that they have and I love it. It's just super easy. You tuck one side, you tuck the other and you latch the back. It's less than a minute and it's camps, you know. And you got your mattress in there. It's all comfy. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. We do use cots on occasion. Cots. cots are a good way to go if you don't want to have to deploy a tent like the weather's so nice here. Yeah. Uh, just put a good pad down so you don't get your back cold um, and they they fold up pretty tight. Our chefs have been sleeping under the stars at night just on these cots. It's kind of cool. Yeah, it's gorgeous Definitely different. Yeah. All right, is there anything else? Oh yeah, I see some I, I see some too. fancy suspension under the <laughs> uh, under the back there. Yeah, that is Cali Fab. They are out of Carmichael. Sacramento area. Yeah, Califab's been around. I remember when they first started, um, probably, I don't even know, 10 years ago. Their control arms are incredible. They're a sleeved DOM. So it's not just one piece of DOM, it's DOM within DOM. The, the axle tab will break before the control arm will break. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the Califab uses Johnny joints, Curry Johnny joints. Mm -hmm. So they're a high flex joint and they're rebuildable. Uh, they also offset the the tap, oh, what do you want to call it? The bushing yeah. on the axle side so it clears the gas tank under high articulation. That's a, this guy is talking about some good stuff here because when you start lifting these trucks and you're putting these long travel shocks and having all this articulation on these trucks, the suspension geometry is completely off and you'll start to get roll steer. So the links are too short in the rear and they'll start binding up and pulling that um, drive shaft right into the gas tank skid and then into the gas tank. So I'm actually on my truck right now that I'm getting rid of, that one is 
if I were to wheel it again, it would probably get a hole in the gas tank, but for that very reason. So that is very cool with the Johnny joints and adjustable links that Califab does. Yeah. That's very neat to hear. I do have a double card and rear drive shaft on this as well oh. because of the lift height. Uh, again, I've had multiple coils on this and I was running a Dobinson's progressive spring rate coil for a while that was quite tall when it wasn't loaded. And I've, I've had a lot of vehicles in the past and I just didn't want to deal with driveline vibrations. Yeah. So South Bay driveline in San Jose, I've used them for years too. They're fantastic, but you know, Tom Woods or any of the other big driveline manufacturers online, you send them measurements and they'll, they'll get it out to you. Most, most of your local drive shaft shops are a day turn around and do awesome work and it's not very expensive to have done, but it's definitely worth it. Let's go over a couple more things. What is your favorite mod? 35s. 35s. Yeah. The Firestone MT2 35s. That's why we're here today. It makes everything easier. You could do the same trails in a 33 or a vehicle with 33s, but you have to work a lot more. You have to pay more attention. You got to pick a better line. Uh, with the 35s, at least for the trails that we've been running recently, oh, yeah. you don't have to pick a line. No. You just take it easy with the trailers and you're good. So if you're wheeling like us, for four or six hours a day and then get to camp and have to start work because we're cooking for everyone. Yeah. Um, making the trailer easier is, is a huge value for us. Just keeping up with the trailers too. I mean, we're, we have a group of about 12 rigs this week and we're all in the back with our trailers, but we're keeping up, no problem. They're not very far ahead of us and 33s, 35s, 30, 34, 35s, and we're cruising right along here. Yeah. It's awesome. So what is your least favorite mod? <sighs> was it your roof rack? Was it the platform <laughs> roof rack? Yeah, uh, we could go with that. Those flat rack, I mean, it depends on how the slats are. So the, the, the utility racks, I think is what they refer to them. Yeah. Yeah, so there are some utility racks that have the slats going from side to side, and there's some where they're going front to back. You wanna go with the brand that goes front to back. Because really? if they go side to side, you get the, the weird harmonics with the wind. Uh, and okay. especially if you have a sunroof, in my experience, the glass was actually moving up and down. Um, the side to side slats, I know why manufacturers do that. They can flat pack it in a much smaller box. Definitely. That's why I like the Easy On and some of the other ones, they come fully welded mm -hmm. because they just can't, it's, yeah. it's manufacturing wise, they can't do it any other way. But they, the performance difference is, significant night and day yeah good to know good mm -hmm. to know so before we finish up here i got a few more questions for jason why cooking and why off-road sure what, how'd you get into it yeah well i love both yeah uh i wrote the cookbook overland cookery uh back in 2017 published it in 2018 and the whole book is about meal planning when you're off-road so you totally. don't have food go bad um all the recipes are based off the most perishable ingredient so you can plan out Okay. five days, 10 days, even if you want on the trail and identify what ingredients you can use. Yeah. And that opens up more creative recipe development. So you get away from hot dogs, preserved meats, things like that. Um, the you can normal eat, stuff. Yeah. yeah, you can eat healthier, more extravagant, um, just more creatively. Yeah. And we were doing that for several years, just with the cookbook, sort of on the side for fun. And yeah. uh, Overland Expo reached out and asked if we could cook for a media event last year. I'm like, absolutely, we'll make it happen. And word of mouth off that, it just boom, 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 boom. And now we're doing it. It's not full time, but it's as we, as the events come in, I have a rotating pool of chefs that are all off-road experienced. And we've got multiple trailers, multiple vehicles in different states. And if an event happens and they need cooking or food, the for food service, yeah, we're the ones that are doing it. So uh, and they, they crush it. The ambiance that they put on this trip has been phenomenal they're hanging um, christmas lights almost across the cars and it's it's a vibe it's a vibe yeah yeah so we, we specialize in in on-site private overland chef services and it could be a, a private party like a small group or it could be a large media event like this uh, we tailor it specifically to the client's taste and we just we love doing it we're outdoors we're cooking great food we're creating great experiences and getting to know new people yep. making connections and you're off-roading and forerunners <laughs> yeah for your job yeah. almost it's that it's not a bad gig not a bad gig at all yeah 
The cookbook's available on Amazon. It's called Overland Cookery. We have a second edition coming out soon as well. Yeah, what's your uh, Instagram page, everything? Yeah, all that? Overland, Overland Cookery. Cookery. Yeah, that's this.